Hi there, welcome to Best Theme Park Adventure, where we look at everything travel and theme park related to help have a great day out. Welcome to Orlando, Florida, the theme park capital of the world. Today I'm going to take you around Universal's Islands of Adventure at Universal Orlando Resort. As you go through the entrance, you pass underneath the uh, Adventure Begins Bridge, you walk past Corpisco Grill on the left and Croissant Moon Bakery on the right and as you walk straight ahead in front of you there's a smoking and vaping area well which is currently a smoking and vaping area and uh, look straight out across the lake and you'll see Hogwarts in the distance and Velocicoaster racing around its track as you see it come around in a moment you'll see it do its wonderful inversion over the lake look at that amazing ride and yeah to the left is uh, Marvel Superhero Island, which is where we're going to head in just a moment. And as you can see, you've got the Jurassic Park area over there. And on the right hand side here, you've got Dr. Seuss's Seuss Landing. So we're going to turn around and head back. So this is if you go left as you go in the park, and you walk across this bridge. And on the left hand side, just before you cross the bridge, there's also a Starbucks and there's a Cinnabon where you can get some delightful Cinnabons for a few dollars and uh, if you're in early enough and you want some breakfast. As you can see straight in front of you you've got Cafe 4, we'll discuss that in a few minutes because we're going to walk back past that. Directly above your head now you've got the Incredible Hulk roller coaster. There we go, the rattle out now. 67 miles an hour top speed. 0 to 40 miles an hour in two seconds. And I think you pull four G's at different points throughout the ride. Absolutely incredible ride. Well, we'll head round to the left. And we're going to get ourselves a locker. You go past a little kiosk here that sells some of the incredible Hulk related merchandise. And some soft drinks and refreshments. Although one tip is uh, if you're going to be staying in the park for the whole entire day it's worthwhile buying one of the refill cups they do for about $20 and then you can get uh, free refill, refill straight out the whole entire day and obviously you get to keep the cup as a souvenir as well. If you buy more than one they get slightly cheaper. Here we've got Stormforce Accelotron which is basically teacups. I do believe if you spin the wheel in the middle faster you spin more on the spot as that yellow one's doing that. So if you like the teacups, that's definitely got to be a ride worth doing. And as you come away from there, you can see that's the entrance to the Hulk coaster. Great theming in the walkway, as you queue. Worthwhile getting a locker before because you can't take anything on with you. It's um, it's a must at Universal now, Islands of Adventure. It's, uh, the locker's free for the duration of while you ride your, while you ride the ride. Anyway, if you come away from the Hulk now, you can head down into Marvel Superhero Island and again past Cafe 4. They sell a selection of food, meatballs and pasta, pizza, um, various other bits and bobs. They also do a character meet and greet where you can meet some of the character Marvel heroes if you do a, a meal in there. It's around about $50, $60 a person, something like that. You have to no. book that online or book it with them. As you walk through here, um, Marvel Superhero Island. There's an arcade on the left, and there's a couple of shops on the right hand side where you can go and buy your merchandise and gifts. Little area underneath Wolverine now used to be a, a, a meet and greet where you can have a photo done. Don't know if they're still doing that or not here. And there's Dr. Doom's Fair Fall, 185 feet, pulls you up and drops you back down again slightly higher velocity than gravity so you get the, the, the bouncy slightly out of your seat sort of motion and there's another shop there and as you walk around here you can go past a few kiosks coming up on the left hand side in a few moments is the amazing spider-man 3d ride that's a indoor motion coaster with 3D glasses. There's a few snack kiosks on the way around. There we go, they do chili cheese dogs, chicken empanadas, 
Yeah, they sell beers, snacks, soft drinks. There's lots of spots around the park where you can also get refills if you buy the refill cup of the day as well. It's uh, the freestyle cup, so you get the freestyle machines. There we are, there's the amazing Spider-Man ride. Again, great theming throughout, good fun ride. Next door to Spider-Man, you've got Auntie Anne's pretzels. Great selection of pretzels there if you're a pretzel lover. Got to admit, it does make a tasty snack. There we go, let's pop up and give you some prices. So these prices are accurate as at September, October 2024. Obviously, if you're watching this video after that, they may well have gone up slightly by then. Now, as we walk down here, you've got another kiosk over there that sells some snacks and drinks. On the right hand side over there, you've got Captain America's Diner that sells similar food and drinks and beverages to Cafe Four. And there's, yeah, there's Captain America meet and greet down there. A couple of little superheroes meeting the cap. Obviously, you can take a photo. There's normally a queue for, for that sort of thing. But again, you might get different characters the Green Goblin, Spider Man, Captain America, whoever they've got out on the day. Another gift shop on the left just there. Let's look back up at it. That gift shop there on the left hand side you've just seen has got uh, quite a lot of collectible figurines and things like that in there as well. And here we go, definitely a good good spot for an ice cream. Good value for money, not too expensive. Tasted a little dull with ice creams I believe. Lemon slush if you're a big fan as you walk on a bit further. Again, most of these kiosks will do the freestyle cup refill as well, you can just ask. It's got a little sensor in the bottom of the cup. So all they do is pop it on a pad, check that it's been paid for for the day, and then top it up. Here we go, enter into the Lagoon. That's the next area of the park that you'll come to if you're going around the park clockwise. So first we've got Marvel Superhero Island, then you've got Toon Lagoon. The annual pass holder stop is in this area as well. Got an annual pass, you can pop in there and see the merchandise and get your, your, your free pin you get and whatnot. Here we are. Comic strip cafe again, pizzas, burgers, uh, usual usual theme park food. Again, it's you know, it's okay. Keeps you going through the day. And there's a kiosk on the left there that sells ice creams and popsicles and things. This is incredible, oh, that looks nice. Soft serve Sundays, super. Mm. Might have to stop there next time I go. Oh, I like Toon Lagoon, it's brightly coloured. A lot of the characters are in there. Flash Gordon, haha, <laughs> blast from the past. And there's lots of little water features all the way around there on a hot day, which it invariably is in Florida, even in the winter. The uh, kiddies can run along and run through the water or put their hands in it and cool down on a hot day in the hot sun. Unless you're heading around this direction, there's a, again, a of other gift shops and sweet shops and cake shops. Here we go, Blondie's, there's another cafe you can pop in. Get yourself some food if it's lunch or dinner time and you're feeling peckish and you've got to eat something. We're going to cut across the bridge here and then we can see Mr. Wimpy's Cafe where they actually sell pineapple Dole Whip 
and some amazing burgers. Not the cheapest in the park, but they're, they're nice. And there's Popeye and Bluto's bilge wrap barges. One's just going around the corner in the river. We'll have a look at that in a moment. There we are, there's a green piece. Let's take a peek. You can tell they say burgers by the gigantic burger that's above the, uh, above the entrance. Again, if you've got a freestyle cup, you can get it refilled in most of the cafes as well. There we are, cheeseburgers, vegetarian burgers, and Dole Whip, Caddy fries, chips, various bits and bobs to keep you going throughout the day. Plenty of places to eat in both the parks of Universal and Volcano Bay. And plenty of places where you can get refreshments. And obviously if you're a coffee lover, as I am, then uh, you've got a Starbucks and both Universal Studios and in Islands of Adventure. Universal Studios is in the New York area. Islands of Adventure is just inside the entrance by the Confisco Grill. There's a little kiosk selling all sorts of little gifts and souvenirs and ponchos, oddly enough, right by the water rides. Personally, I don't think it's really worth it because you're going to get wet with a poncho, so there we are. That's... Uh, the entrance of Popeye's bilge wrap barges. There's one going there. As you can see, you sit in them in a circle, and it's basically like a rapids river type adventure where you will definitely get wet. There's a plastic covered central part where you can pop your bags and other bits and bobs. You wear a lap belt because it can get a bit choppy in there. But it's a good fun ride, and on a hot day, you will definitely cool down because you will definitely get wet. Anyway, we'll come out of that area and we'll continue walking around the park. So we're going to go right out of that bit. You're going to come back on yourself. There's the restrooms. And there's some freestyle machines straight in front of you there. So if you've bought the refill cup, again, you can just pop up yourself. Every 10 minutes, you can refill your drink. It, uh, if you get it right the first time, otherwise you've got to wait 10 minutes before you fill it up again. <laughs> but yeah, that's good value, really, because um, if you're in the park for eight or eight hours or ten hours you're going to drink more than four or five cups and then it makes it cheaper than buying individual drinks throughout the day there we are there's the freestyle cups appetizer along with a few other things footlong corn dog churros churros all over the place chips freestyle single refill that's if you just want one drink but they also do the freestyle prepaid for the day cup as well refill so we're going to head around here and we're going to look for Ripsaw Falls. So they do rides for Ripsaw Falls. That's a cracking little ride. A nice leisurely boat ride around all the whimsical little decorations inside and theming. And then you come out and fly down a huge drop, splash down into the, into the water and again get totally drenched and very, very wet. So it's, uh, we'll take a peek at that in just a moment. But again, it's a great fun ride in the summer and the winter. It's a great fun ride in Florida because, as I said, it's pretty much always hot. Obviously, a lot of the outdoor rides close when you get rain. Generally in Florida, it's rain mid to late afternoon. It'll maybe be for an hour at the most. Sometimes only a few minutes. Obviously, if thunderstorms, a lot of the rides will stay shut. So your best bet, in my view, is uh, to try and hit some of the outdoor rides before sort of two three four o'clock in the afternoon uh, but again can't guarantee it's not going to rain in the morning just on occasion there's some more kiosks there with some more gifts and there we go is which all falls you get to see there's a lovely drop there you see out of the top in your little boat you sit behind each other i think there's four on a boat could be five we'll see in a moment pretty sure it's four and you come flying down that lovely drop Here we go. And splash. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, super stuff. Um, it is tracked, it's, uh, it's, it's a big drop, but it's um, it's a track ride, so it actually comes down in complete control. You just get very wet while you're doing it, look. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, look at that. Yeah, pretty sure it's four in a boat. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's the that's the, the exit from Team Lagoon now. There's another kiosk there that sells ice, ices and various other drinks there as well. Uh, some, some snacks. And you can get your freestyle refills there as well. Between you and me, you can get ices if you ask for them on a freestyle refill. It makes a great value because the freestyle cups are around about $20. And ices are over $6 each, so... Anyway, coming out to the lagoon, then you head round and you get Kong Skull Island, Rain of Kong, and then if you backtrack on yourself and you walk through this area, which is heading towards Jurassic Park, another kiosk sale, looks like they do. Hot dogs, chips, again, beverages, plenty of drinks, ices, freestyle drinks, Coke, water. Not a lot of places where you can get coffee and hot beverages around the park, but to be fair, most people want cold ones anyway. Um, Thunder Falls, Thunder Falls Terrace, yep, there's a restaurant that sells rotisserie chicken and burgers and various other bits and bobs. There's a nice Jurassic Park photo opportunity there where you can actually have a photo taken with a gigantic dinosaur coming out of the bushes. And oddly enough, the car that's um, featured in the park is one of the genuine cars that was used from the original Jurassic Park film. A little bit of trivia for you. Here we are, another beverage stand. Send the snacks and beverages. Looks like we might possibly have fruit there as well. It's nice and refreshing to see fruit and other bits and bobs like that around the park instead of all just the junk food all the time. But again, you, you need your sugar energy for energy because uh, in the hot sun your body rips through glucose, in which case, sugary stuff, it, it goes through your system fairly quick. And I was wrong, it wasn't fruit, it was especially potato chips, but there we are. <laughs> okay, so we're coming up to Jurassic Park River Adventure. This is the actual exit from the ride, or just before the exit from the ride, the last part of it, um, which you can look forward to if you do it. That's again, much bigger boat, many more people say in it, but it's a fairly big drop at the end, not as big as Ripsaw Falls, and again, it's guided on a track and it comes sloshing down into the uh, into the water there's a splash zone here where if you stand too close you will get wet uh, if you're in the boat again you will probably get a little wet not as wet as the other two but you will get a little wet more splashes rather than drenching but again great fun themed little ride if you like Jurassic Park and dinosaurs And then we can turn around and continue on around the park and then we'll come up to the area where Velocicoaster is. And there's uh, the Outfitter's store there where you can go in and buy your dinosaur related products and Jurassic Park related products. T-shirts, vests, little model dinosaurs, cuddly toys, plushes, various bits and bobs. And there we are, you can see the, one of the newer sections of the park. And the Velocicoaster and running through the distance. On the left here we've got Jurassic Park's River Adventure which we've just seen splashing down. That's the entrance for it so you can pop in there and queue up and do that. Wait time's not generally that bad for that ride. It's um, it takes quite a few in the boat so it moves fairly well. Here we are. It's uh, part of Velocicoaster's track so you can as you can see it's set as set based on the theming from the film. And that's Camp Jurassic. That's a kids play area. Didn't head in there, didn't have any kids with me, so I didn't, uh, didn't do that. Perhaps you're in council, that's great, you've got to do that, that's a little bit further around. That's um, where you can do a meet and greet with Blue and have a photo opportunity. And it's, uh, it's a giant controlled uh, Velociraptor that um, you can have your photograph taken with. It's good, good fun show, there's a little intro with it as well, the guy does a nice little chat with it. It's, uh, I'll, I'll post another video with that in it. It's good. Another kiosk there with gifts. And drinks, piece of predatoria, um, again, little seating area around the side, I think. And uh, yep, pieces are basically a few other bits and bobs, and uh, beverages, uh, freestyle refills by Lux Whip. And yep, there we go, salads and sides. You can get a Caesar salad there, and basically pieces, and a brookie, or oh, to look a brookie. And there we go, they actually sell the freestyle cups at a lot of these places as well. But obviously, once you've got one, you, you pay less the next day for a refill. So if you pay $20 for the actual cup, then the next day you, you come in, you may only pay 
10, 11 dollars or whatever it may be to, to reuse the same cup. So if you're going for more than one day, it's worth buying on the first day because then the next day it's only going to cost you 10, 12 dollars for, uh, for your refills for the whole day. Another snack stand here, hot popcorn. But they do churros as well. Freestyle refills, yeah, freestyle cups, soft drinks, donuts, various other bits and bobs, cinnamon churros, there we go, yep. So that's in Jurassic Park area, you can get those as well. Let's have a look. Uh, yes, they do some premium cocktails and alcoholic beverages as well. Obviously got to be the required age for the alcoholic beverages. There's a couple of freestyle refill machines there as well. So if you don't want to queue up, you can just go straight over the machine. Fill up your freestyle cup that you prepaid for. Here we've got Velocicoaster, one of the newest, most exciting rides in the park. The queue for this ride is generally not that bad. It's, um, last time I went, I think I was queuing 15 minutes, 20 minutes. The theming is fantastic, walking through from the line. There's a video presentation with Chris Pratt from the movie and uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. And he explains to you about the uh, the ride and the experience you're going to go through, obviously from a theatrical perspective. But again, the theming is spectacular, done very, very well. But that's the main ride entrance. Uh, again, you need a locker for this ride. Trust me, you're going to want one. You spend anything up to about 12 seconds upside down on this ride. So, not in one go, obviously, but in various stages throughout the ride. So, yeah, if you've got anything in your pockets you want to keep, I put it in a locker. And there we go, we're exiting Jurassic Park and heading into Harry Potter World. So, yeah, that was the Jurassic Park gate. If you're coming from the right hand side anti clockwise, you'd walk through the Jurassic Park gate, but obviously, we came in from the left through. Marvel Superhero Island, so the Jurassic Park gate was on the exit route for us. Um, as you come over the bridge, if you look up to the left, you'll see Hogwarts Castle up in the distance, and the entrance to Hogsmeade. Great photo opportunity for Hogwarts there. And the first ride you've got around to the left is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, which that's the entrance for them. And to the right around this area as well is Hagrid's um, fly of the Hippogriff. That's not Hagrid, it's just Fly of the Hippogriff. <clears throat> I always think of Hagrid with the Hippogriff and everything else because he's the creature guy. Butterbeer stand here. I think that's five or six different types of Butterbeer. You can get an Islands of Adventure and Universal now. Uh, it's, you, know, you get a cup of Butterbeer, frozen or hot, or ice cream, or a cream pot, or whatever else they do now. Um, again, it's, it's up, I think it's about $9 for a butterbeer. There we are, Hogwarts again in the distance. There's some of the track from Fly the Hippogriff. Now we'll have a walk through the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Hogsmeade Village. There's lots of little shops through here. If you look in the windows for the shops, there's everything themed for Harry Potter in different windows ranging from robes, dresses, even got uh, mandrakes in one, one of the windows as well. There we go, there's one of the food carts that actually does sell fruit, but looks like they've pretty much sold out today. And uh, some little bits and bobs there as well. Theming is fantastic. It's, uh, it's like stepping into the world of Harry Potter. Always a popular packed area of the park. Obviously in this park you've got the Three Broomsticks restaurant. In Universal Studios you've got uh, the Leaky Cauldron. Both which sell a version of traditional English food. Fish and chips, and bangers and mash. And cottage pie, that sort of thing. Three broomsticks is up here, just on the right-hand side. That's where those pillars are. Well, there's two 
doorways are right in front of you now. That's where there's some restrooms. Again, they're themed. You've got Moaning Myrtle chattering away while you're in the, in the bathroom. <laughs> there we are, that archway on the right with the peak porch is three broomsticks. And the Butterbeer cart in front of us on the left hand side there. And then we've got Honey Dukes over there. Obviously, the place to go to buy your Wizarding World sweets and treats. I've done another video with uh, inside of Honey Dukes and some of the sweets and bits you can buy in there and cakes. You've got some incredible stuff. No melt ice cream, which obviously is sort of whip, but it's uh, great for the kids. That's a Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorcycle Journey Adventure, which we just passed on the left. And again, and as I said, another butterbeer stand here that seems to sell frozen and chilled. Not sure if that one sells hot or not. You can definitely get it in uh, in the free broomsticks, though, if you can't get it at the car. And again, honey dukes from the outside there. Outside the Zonkos. And as you walk through the archway there, you can see Hogsmeade Station there, where you get your train, the Hogwarts Express, over to Universal Studios to go to Diagon Alley. There's a mock-up of the Hogwarts Express there, where you can take a photo with it. Sometimes there's a conductor there as well, you can meet and have a photo with. And there's the actual Hogwarts Express that you'd uh, get on to go over to Universal Studios. You do need a two-park or three-park ticket on annual pass ride the Hogwarts Express. You can't do it with a single park ticket. Just a note. And there's a wanted wizard outside the three broomsticks. And there we go, some snow capped roofs there, which is bizarre for Florida, but there we go, it's uh, in keeping with the theming, so it looks spectacular. And oh, there's the menu for the three three broomsticks outside the front, or a limited version of it. You know, they do sell more than that. Uh, fish and chips and shepherd's pie and garden salad although I'm English and generally speaking I think we have peas rather than garden salad but uh, there we go each to their own there we go that's the butterbeer car again and as you exit through the archway that we saw a few moments ago you enter into Dr. Seuss's Seuss Landing which obviously is the most colourful bright vibrant area of the park uh, popular with adults and kids alike They've got everything, all the characters from Dr. Seuss, the Cat in the Hat, the Lorax, Thing 1, Thing 2, various other bits and bobs all over the place. And uh, they've got a little train ride that's um, high up, sort of for, for second floor level, that goes around above the shops and uh, through some of the buildings. And there's some nice sweet shops and treat shops and gift shops and there's a candy store in front of us there, look. Sell a whole variety of things. Give you a little. There we are, look. We'll take a peek at some of these. So they've got the large donuts, like the Lard Lad donuts from Simpsons in there as well. But, and there's a whole range of different fudge that they sell, and various other candies. If you do a deal with the fudge, I think you get. Uh, Six for the price of four or something like that from time to time. Cat in the Hat cookies, sugar cookies I think. And a whole host of other delicacies to keep you sugar charged for the rest of the day. Cupcakes, toffee apples, cookies. There's a Gringe one. Sing one, sing two. Various other bits and bobs. All very tasty. Pretty sure they're about ten, twelve dollars for the toffee apples and coated apples, cookies, chocolate-covered pretzels, caramel apples, bags of candy, various other bits and bobs, and obviously some gifts as well, refill things, pick and mix. If you're into pick and mix, probably. Works out quite expensive on the pick and mix compared to your average shop, but well, hey, the Nines of Adventure, so it's going to be uh, some giant marshmallows there, and uh, you know, some deal they're running there as well. Yeah, that's cotton candy, 
more packaged sweets, pre-packaged ones. Yeah, so that's the candy store in uh, Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss Landing. There's a little train track that goes up the top where the train runs around, as I said earlier. Runs through the buildings. Quite a quaint, sweet little ride. There we are, there it is. And again, there's some food and ice cream kiosks as you walk through and walk around. Some various things. There we go. Sunday on a stick. Ooh, waffle cones. Lovely. Always is a light in Florida. Really warm weather. Can't beat Sunday on a stick. And we've got a Circus McGurkis cafe over there on the left. And a kiosk. There's Dr. Seuss's car Susel. This is Carousel Merry-Go-Round Ride. Yeah, Circus McGurkis Cafe. Again, same sort of selection of foodstuffs. Uh, the other cafes, burgers and whatnot. As you walk around the park a little more, you just about see the carousel there in the distance. And there's some other exciting little areas for the kiddies to run around in. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Again, that's an up and down, merry-go-round type ride where you can control your fish going up and down. I believe if you do it at the right time, you don't get sprayed with water. Obviously, if you get your timing wrong, I think you get squirted. But uh, it's not um, it's not drenching. Again, it's just a sprinkling of water, I think. It used to be one of my daughter's favorites. And we've got the cat in the hat, which you can tell by the ginormous hat that's above your eye. And gift shop for the cat in the hat, which again has got wonderful little cat in the hat and Dr. Seuss themed stuff. All with sweets, treats, clothes, garments. And yeah, maybe we'll take a look and show you for a minute. There we are. Ah, uh -huh. yes, there we go. Look. Drinks cups. Little plush cuddly toys, t-shirts, baby grows, all manner of different things you can buy with the Dr. Seuss theming. Cups, drinks cups, <laughs> future thing, that's good. And again the cat in the hat right there, which you can't really miss. Again, I've done a video with uh, all the rides and islands of adventure in it. That's got the cat in the hat ride. And, um, it's very good. It's, it's uh, entertaining. Another drink stand. It's got those lovely ices and various other bits and bobs you can get your refills with. There's a slightly quieter area there where you can sit and cool off and relax for five minutes if you want to. There's a little adventure area there as well where you can take the kids for a little explore around in Dr. Seuss's world. Uh, coming up on the right hand side in the moment there's going to be the uh, Green Eggs and Ham food kiosk which does do a spectacular deal on tater tots and uh, again it's, um, it's a large portion for the price. I think it's only between 10 and 11 dollars and uh, you get a good sized dish. It's um, do your average person for a meal or a you could share it with somebody and probably have it as a snack. Um, they do prefer any pizza and potato tots and uh, various other, a couple of other ones as well. I think they do a uh, spicy chicken one as well. But again, you know, ten, eleven dollars, so it's fairly good value. And a nice, uh, a nice little meal or snack to share. 
We're coming towards the end of uh, Seuss Landing now. Here we go, you can see. Back side of it. That's the exit that you'd see if you were coming in from the other side of the park. So if, if, if you came in through this part of the park, which is where we started, and you went to the right, you'd see that Seuss Landing sign that we saw a moment ago. If you went around the park anti-clockwise. Obviously we went clockwise, so we finished in Seuss Landing. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's Islands of Adventure, a um, a clockwise tour from Marvel Superhero Island right through Jurassic Park, Skull Island, Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and Seuss Landing, and back to the beginning again, where uh, Fisco Grill is and Russell Moon Bakery. There's a little gift shop on the exit as well, where you sometimes can get some discounted sale items from the park. It's uh, on occasion it's got some fairly good deals in there for little gifts not a lot of stuff but just sort of possibly end of line things that Universal Studios Islands of Adventure's got well I hope you enjoyed the walk around if you're coming to Islands of Adventure have a fantastic time um, if you like the exciting fast rides do Hagrid's motorbike ride do Velocicoaster, do the Hulk and then work your way through the rest of them uh, again 3D Simulator Kong Skull Island is very good um, but yeah have a wonderful time and enjoy your vacation. Thanks for watching.